Hey, if you think about getting into mechanical keyboards, look no further. Today I want to explore with you the Keychron K3 version 1. I have it over two years now, so it's a long-term review and I will give you some pros and cons in the end of the video. So I kept the box now for over two years and let's take a look what's inside. 10 years later. So we get some keycaps uh, to exchange for the orange ones. I kept the dark ones. Uh, we have a um, manual, some uh, of the how to use it, the form. And uh, what I like quite a lot is a dust cap you can put over the keyboard and most important, the keyboard. I got the one with the blue switches. Uh, I will also do a little comparison later with the other switches I have. Um, so yeah, this is the blue switches one and you also have like a key puller. I never used that one. This is the keyboard. It looks quite nice and slim. I use the US layout because I prefer it for programming because you have the brackets directly on the axis. I like the lighting quite a lot. I have only the uh, white backlight, but still I, I like how the background is shining through the keycaps. And now let's hear how it is typing. I will do some monkey type. As comparison, let's hear the brown switches from the corn keyboard. And if you are interested in the corn, take a look at the other video, how I build it and on my long-term review. I also may create a long-term review of the corn where I use it now over two months. And for the last comparison, I will use the red switches just as a comparison for the sound. So as you saw, the Keychron K3, it's a really lovely keyboard. So the blue switches are really amazing. It feels like typing on a typewriter. The advantages for me are definitely the typing on the blue switches, the low profile, but still you have all the keys accessible, except of the num block, uh, but I never used the num block anyways. What I really enjoy about this keyboard is the build quality. So many people had concerns about the build quality as well as the long-term review. For me, I had nothing to complain about it except the battery life. This one you need to charge every week and if you have the backlight or RGB on, then even more often. One big disadvantage I have with the blue switches is that you annoy every coworker. So if you type on it, it's just annoying for everyone else. Even in meetings, I cannot type without uh, muting myself. There's a software, it's untackled or unclicked or something uh, that removes these clicky sounds from your microphone. And now I switch to the corn keyboard I built two months ago. So if you're interested in it, take a look at the other video. And that's why I'm not using the K3 anymore. I also have the K12. Uh, the advantage of the K12 is that it is way more silent, but it is a 60% layout. And I'm not really happy about the positioning of the arrow keys. So if it's not on HJK, L, so like the Vim motions, it does not make sense for me. The 75% on the other hand is quite nice if you are a beginner and if you are new to mechanical keyboards. If you prefer the more ergonomical ones and more like customizable ones, I highly recommend checking out the corn video. If you like this video or learned anything about it, I would appreciate a like or subscribe. And if you are interested in a comparison between the different switch types, let me know down in the comments. Happy if this helped you with the buying decision. Also Nufi Air 75 or the Logitech MX keys is also two alternatives that many people recommend. If you learned something, I would love a subscribe or a like. This keeps me going and motivated and it's free. It does not cost as much as the keyboard. So until next time, thank you for watching.